Hello and welcome to the show supported by Media Proxy. Now today we're talking about ATSC3, also known as Next Gen TV, and we're speaking with a new company, the Kit Plus TV. So we'd like to welcome Heidi Stefan from Titan TV. Hi, Heidi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. So I tell you what. Why don't we start with a little bit of history about ATS3 or Next Gen TV? Give us, give us a bit of background. So ATS, um, ATSC has been around for a while, and then ATSC3 kicked off about 10 years ago. So if anyone's familiar with the digital transition in 2009, um, people always ask what happened to ATSC2, uh, which is a mobile initiative that didn't quite get off the ground, but since then 3.0 has really right. started to exhalate. Um, and with that, a lot of stations have gone live. The last thing that I'd heard about 60 some markets would be live end of this year. And the other nice thing that's really helped this year is a lot of the television sets have now come out with the ATSC 3.0 receiver in it. So consumers can now receive that signal at home. And that is the difference between 1.0 and 3.0 is you will need to have either a new television set or a dongle or something that has a new receiver in it to be able to receive the new yeah. signal. Yes, that's great. So um, you mentioned all of those markets that are coming out. It, this this is a global project. Um, you know, how many markets are, 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 are fully rolled out? What what sort of, what sort of time scale is on it? So Titan TV is more focused with the US. So for what I'm aware yeah. of is more on the US side. I do know that Korea has launched the standard and they had launched it for the last yeah. Winter Olympics. And it's going very well there. Okay. So with our involvement, again, they're looking at by end of this year, about 60 markets plus to go live, and then another more aggressive rollout next year for each of the additional markets. Now, when I say a market that's a US market, and that doesn't mean every station in the market is then broadcasting the new 3.0 signal, it's just a set of stations, and each market is different on what those include as yeah, far as okay. which networks and which stations are going live in each market. Yeah. So Heidi, can you tell us what you can provide with Next Gen TV and ATSC3 um, and the enhancements to products around ATSC3. Yeah, so most broadcasters in the US really know us for our piece up data. So that's the metadata that goes out with the current 1.0 signal to consumers when they click on guide on their TV, that's the metadata that's coming through. So for ATS 3.0, we can provide now what they're calling in a standard ESG data service. So that's electronic service guide. It's the same metadata that's gonna go out that you're seeing yeah. in 1.0, but with 3.0, the enhancements is really the rich metadata. So now you'll be able to see show cards and movie posters and then additional content, not only just about the program, but more about the actors and actresses. So think of your OTT experience today with your Netflix, Amazon Prime, yeah. and you're looking at a movie and you want to dig deeper into that. That's what ESG data service will be able to provide for over the air consumers with ATS 3.0 or a next gen TV. So we're excited to be able to provide that and we're able to go a step further. So we have a tool called Media Star Scheduler. It is an online tool that allows broadcasters today to build out their schedule five years in the future. With this tool, they can add their own programming. So as we know in Next Gen TV, broadcasters can quickly put up another flash channel as they call it, but they need that metadata behind it. Our tool allows them to go ahead and build that metadata, add those show cards, add the images, maybe the anchors information and be able to send it out in the 3.0 signal so that consumer at home when they're clicking on the guide has all the information that they need. So, I mean, have you been working with anyone in particular? Have you got any, 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 any particular examples of how you've taken clients forward already? Yeah, so we have basically have provided the ESG data for any of their initial test markets from the Pearl Phoenix market to Dallas to next or uh, News Press and Gazette's um, Santa Barbara market. And we are working with a project with uh, News Press and Gazette related to dynamic ad insertion, which really comes back to also be able to know what that content is so they can do dynamic content. Related to our part of that is the IDER system. So this is a nonprofit organization that allows content producers from VOD to OTT to over the air to register their programs. And then the idea is this then identifier then goes through the entire station system from every hardware and software that it hits. So that when it goes out to the end device, um, then the ad system can say, okay, this is for example, 
two broke girls, but all of a sudden there's breaking news, there's a new IDER number. And now that the ad system can say, hey, I want to actually put this higher priced ad that will pay for it breaking news yeah. and do a dynamic ad insertion. So that's one of the projects that we're working on with News Press and Gazette. Um, it's the addressable asset identification standard for next gen distribution. And there's a lot of other possibilities this can happen. And this can even do some stuff in 1.0 that will help stations as well. So you mentioned Media Start Scheduler earlier on, Heidi. What other tools are out there to help convert uh, consumers over to ATSC3? So one of the things that we really are pushing for is consumers today and how they use or consume broadcasting. One of the things that was really heavily, especially because of the pandemic, is for, you know, watching it on VOD or watching it on some of these over the top mm. providers. They have that experience to be able to really, you know, what's on searching. Maybe I go then search for something and it's on right now. I can watch it right now. That's the experience that we want to be able to provide and help broadcasters provide with next gen TV is to provide them all that metadata, help them with the information so that consumers will then, hey, I'm familiar this with an OTT, but it's a better experience than it will be with 3.0 with the audio descriptions that will be able to there, be able to enhance that. So here's one way that we feel that consumers will transition from you know, OTT over to 3.0 because they can have that same user experience they have today with all that content. What really is going to help remove that is as far as will the receiver application, so the television set guy be able to pull in all that information, or will broadcasters need to send out a what they call a broadcaster app that is then downloaded on the TV that allows them that other user experience. Yeah, so the, a, a little little uh, sort of a, a side question in a way, does the broadcaster actually need to invest in anything other than your services in order to be compliant? They, or they probably don't have to, but that's going to make their life a lot easier to invest in your services. They don't have any hardware upgrades or anything, do they? Or do they? There will be upgrades, but with the repack that just happened in the US that just finished up about a year ago, uh -huh. a lot of stations, what they did is when they had to do the repack, had to buy a different additional equipment for that, they actually invested in equipment that right. can also be used for next-gen television. So some already have that equipment in there, they just haven't put it in place. The other thing will be some of the hardware or actually investing in what we call broadcaster applications. So it's just an app that would sit on the television that provides more flexibility for the local broadcaster. And again, that broadcaster app could be very different from one station to another station in the market. So it just depends on what the individual broadcaster wants to provide and the additional services in that application. That's great. Thank you very much indeed, Heidi. So um, just for those watching, where can they find out some more? For more information, go to our website, which is titantvinc.com. And then we have an upcoming webinar series to go all over all of these updates that we have. And we've talked about if you want more information. It's the same website. It's just titantvinc.com backslash webinar series. So thank you very much indeed, Heidi. Yeah. Do check out the, the web link there at titantvinc.com. Thanks also to Media Proxy, of course, for their support at Kit Plus TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.